All right, I started the recording, so just so you know. Um, yeah, let's go, go over the problem sets. Uh, let's look at the first problem set, right? Any question on that? Let's see. So the first thing you do is to look at the descriptions. The instruction says, um, Blah, blah and implement the program prompt user for answer to the great question of lives, the universe of everything. Output yes if the user equals 42 or case insensitivity 42 or 42. So these three cases, right? And otherwise, output no. Right. So there's a hint no need to convert user input to integer if you check your equality with the string 42, okay? Uh, rather than an integer 42. Um, it's okay if you output a user's wraps into multiple lines. So that's the that's the prompt. So now let's look at the, um, who is this, um, the answer. Right, so let's run it first. What's the answer? Let's try to say 42, and you're supposed to say yes, right? And if I run again, if you give them 42, and it should be yes, and if you run again with uh, capitalized, 42 and I'm 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 gonna use this too and that's no. So what he did here is define a function deep print yes. So if answer is equal equal, so this equal equal to compare, right? String 42 or is equal to 42 or 42. So only these two uh, three conditions you print yes. Although in this case you will hit just the print yes. Else, um, you don't need this uh, extra space here. Style is important too, right? Print no. Okay, so this is the first very simple answer. Does it require case sensitive or insensitive? All right, so let me ask this. If I want to make it the case insensitive, what do we do? That's a good question, I guess. So if I say either 42 or 42 in uppercase, lowercase, or Camel casing, capitalized, they are all. There is a method called the uh, lower right so you call the lower method on the string object it will give you the lower version of this input so if i say for the uppercase right for the f-o-r-t-y 42 and it will say no so let's print uh, uh So why why is no? Right? Let's say answer equal to answer dot lower. I'm actually print actually um I can print this right. This is a debug method. Allen, right? There's two Allens. So if I print uh, the answer, okay. This is another way to. This is a called F string, right? So formatted string. If you print this and you run it, let's say for K2, and you can see the answer is yes because the lowercase version is 42. So previously, if I just call answer.lower, why this is not taking effect? Well, answer.lower is just changing temporary that string to lower, but the return value is. Well, actually, um, let's just look at the uh, Google Doc, right? Of oh, the uh, Python string dot lower method. Let's see how they go, how how that say, right? Uh, let's go to the official document. Python dot org. Python dot org is the official document, right? Uh, Lucas.
So if you look at the documentation, common string operations, uh, there's tons of them, but if you just search for lower, you can see uh, lower case. String dot lower case, string dot lower. There's no string dot lower. Lower. Yeah, string dot lower. So return a copy of the string with all the case character convert to lower case. Okay. So basically, if you type string dot lower, it will return the string. But this, uh, it's a return a copy of the string. Okay. So you have to assign it to the variables to change it. Because remember, string is right, immutable, right? So that's why. Okay. So, so, yeah. Any questions on that? And this is a good technique when you are uh, coding a game and you want the user to input some, like how the character is moving left, right, or east, west, some directions. You want to um, convert it to a uniform, uh, either all lowercase or capitalized, so you can control what you know, user can give you all right. So P. Uh, so what's the other question you want? You want to talk about number two? Code instructions. File extensions. Okay, I'm not gonna go through every single um, problem. So. Uh, I was confused on problem set three, but I think three, problem set okay. one is fine. Problem set three, let's look at three. Yeah, I'd only talk about things that you have questions, right? So what it says is, ah, mass interpreter. So basically you're building a calculator, a simple calculator, right? So, um, you even program prompt user for arithmetic expression, such as you know um, one plus two, um, and then calculate outputs result as floating point value. So the user's input will be format as X, Y, Z, which one space in between. Okay, it's very strict uh, spec. Between X, Y, and one space between Y and Z. So X is integer. Y is one of these four operators, right? Plus minus multiplication and division. Z is an integer. For instance, if the user inputs one space plus space one, your program should be plot 2.0, right? So if this is all about parsing the user input, Y is uh, uh, a division, then Z will not be uh, zero because otherwise you have an exception. So, So yeah, so that's pretty much it. So if you call, recall that uh, as a string, you can have a split method. The split method will take one parameter called uh, the delimiter. So basically you can, um, let me give you an example, right? So basically this is a shell, right? So you can, the good thing about Python is you can test this out. Right? In a Python shell, you can say a, uh, string one, let's say this is uh, x space plus y. Uh, okay, so that's it, right? And if you want to call string one dot split, I guess without any parameter, uh, you can see it to give you, uh, of course, we haven't talked about the list yet, right? Give you a list of three elements x comma plus comma y. So you literally get these three components for the expression in a list. So the split without any parameters will get default using the space as delimiter. Okay, doesn't matter how many space in between, I guess it will, uh, doesn't matter. Let's, let's take a look if I give you more space, all right? And see if it will make a difference. Yeah, it does not make a difference. So basically, any space, it will be uh, ignored. 
Okay, so now you understand this split function. So now you can build the parser, right? So you just simply want to split the string into a list of operators and you can you can um, actually evaluate them. Right now, be, be careful. These are strings, so you want to um, convert them to. Um, to integer, so that's another conversion, right? So, OK, given that. So you can you can have some ideas. Now let's go back to this function and and do a parser thing, right? So um, we can do input equal to input, right? Given that, please enter a mass expression, right? Such as um, quote one plus two. Okay, so give them an example so they know how to follow. Uh, this format. All right, so now you get the expression and you're going to put into an interpreter. So, NT. And then you want to return a value. So, print this. Okay, so interpreter will return a value. So, basically, you'll say oh, this function takes in a string. So, let's say string one, which is a string, and then you will output a uh, integer. Now, what do we do? Um, first of all, you can, uh, let's see, string. Um, let's say this is a raw string, right? String raw. I'm going to define a uh, express is equal to string. Uh, well, uh, let's make it a more meaningful. Let's say tokens. So tokens means I'm going to uh, split the string into a list of things, right? So I'm just going to split. All right, so it, it's now having a list. So this is a list, right? This is a list of, say, a string one and comma plus comma and, and two. OK, so now I know uh, this simple expression, the first in the last element uh, is a uh, number operator. So up one comma up two is equal to, this is another way to assign multiple values. So this is a tuple um, equal to uh, tokens. Now to get the tokens in a list is very similar to the string operator. If they have an index. So the first index should be zero and one and two and so on. So the first element will be token zero, okay? But remember, this is a string, right? So I'm gonna convert to int. Remember the function, int function, you convert to int. So now you successfully get the first one and the same thing as the last one. I can give them a two. Two, it means the third element, provided this only is three, right? Um, yeah. Or I can give them a minus one, given that this uh, list is only have three element either way. And then I will um, also give them a operate operand, sorry, a op three. Actually, um, let me just do three ops, zero, one, and two. So all three, right? Actually, it's tokens pro form. OK, so now I get. Up one, up two. Oh, sorry. The uh, tokens one don't don't need to be converted to string because that's uh, sorry. Don't convert the integer because that's a string. All right, so now we have the three all passed. Right. Uh, this is a regular bracket. Tokens zero, tokens two. And finally, is that right? In tokens zero, tokens one, and in tokens two. All right, so now we have this three operand. So now, what do we do? So what?
So now we do, right? Any ideas? So um, we, not, we now have to look at this up two, right? Which is the, the upper end. So you have multiple cases. Yes, now this is where the case come from. Feel free to put the answer in the chat. How the interpreted function works, right? So yeah, this is how interpreted function works. It takes a string and then output the evaluation, how to calculate this expression. So if ops2 is equal, equal to plus, right? So this is a plus then return um, op1 plus op2, right? Else, if op two is equal equal to what minus, right? There's four cases. Return op one minus op two, right? So far, so on and so forth. Op three is equal equal to division. Return op one divided by op two, right? Now here you may want to check. Um, that op2 is not equal to zero, right? Otherwise, you will have exception. And else if op2, sorry, I put op3, op2, op2 equal to uh, multiplication, return op1 times op2. And then finally, don't forget this, everything else. If it's not one of the through return, something like none. So it's not a, uh, not a number, something like that, right? And if I run it, uh, so one space plus two. So there is some error here, int and string. So what's going on? Let's debug it, right? Trace back most recent call in this line 21. It's doing this and it's already calling the function on line five. It says return up one plus up two. Ah, okay. It should be up three, right? Up three is the is the one because you cannot uh, do up three, up three, up three. E. Right, so up two is the operand. Let's try it again. One plus two. And it's three. And let's run again. One plus uh, two times uh, 100 is 200, right? So that works good. Run again. 100 divided by uh, three is 33 divided by 333. Now, this one does not meet the requirement because this one requirement says you have to, the integer has to be, um, what's the precision of that? Free more value format to one decimal space, right? So you haven't format to one decimal space. So you don't get the four, four score uh, if you didn't format. So formatting is all here, right? The, the return value is an integer. Now you have to convert a string. So you have F string. F string will make this a string again, right? But you have to format to one um, decimal space. So now you have to search the Python library because you know you probably don't use that every day. I don't. Um, so you have to find okay. What is my F string? Is there a search thing here? F string format uh, decimals place Python. Okay. And then it will say, um, have to everything you need to know about, about everything. So, two decimal place here, example, right? So basically, it's um, Oh, that's format. Um, 
there's multiple ways doing that. Uh, on numbers. But there is no um, F string. Back here you go. So, so yeah, F string, a dollar sign. Uh, well, sorry, a uh, curly braces um, with the variable colon dot to f. So basically, that's the syntax. Right? This is a variable. Where's the colon? It's inside the uh, inside of this, right? So this is the whole thing is a variable colon dot to f. That's two decimal space. If I want to one decimal space, that's dot one f, right? Let's run again, and let's say a hundred divided by three. 33.3. .3. So basically, uh, you just Google and figure out to format this with one decimal place, you just call in dot one F or two F. It's floating number. F means floating. Dot one means, you know, how many precision point or decimal point you want to get. And colon is basically say, I want to format the whole variable. This is the whole variable, right? Interpret it as a function, function calling, getting the parameter and the return value is a, uh, a, uh, a integer, but it in the F string, it will be automatically converted to a string and print it out. All right, any question on that? I think we spend a lot of time on this uh, example. Hopefully you get how to, not only how to do this, but um, what should you do? What's the procedure to code things up, right? You have to understand the spec for the function. What's the input? Again, what's the input, what's the output, and then gradually, uh, you know, code, code a little bit, run it. Like you code um, class sign, run it, oh, this works, and then you can just do the same for the rest of the operations, and uh, you will do just fine. So like I said, there's some bugs here. If I do 100 divided by zero, you did the catch in there is a exception, divide by zero, right? So here, you probably want to do something nice, like uh, if that's, uh, if um, op um, three is equal to zero, then return, um, you can't do that, right? Something like that, or just none. Just return none. That means it's not, a not, it's not, not allowed. Otherwise, you will return this, okay? So if you run this again, with this case, you will gracefully handle it. Um, yeah, none type. So it's none. Um, so if it's none, you can do this, right? If, uh, well, actually, given the variable, um, answer is equal to uh, the whole thing, right? Make it a variable. Variable is our friend. So this is much a better way to code it. And then you can do answer. <clears throat> and then you can also do if statement, if answer. So basically, if answer is not none, or you can split, uh, specify say if answer is not none, right? Python is like English. You can actually do this. If answer is not none, you print. Otherwise, you just print. Uh, you can do else here. If it's none, print illegal uh, expression, right? So you can actually do an if statement here. If I do 100 divided by zero, Again, it was the illegal expression because um, the condition answer is a none. All right, any comments? This is how you're gonna code this, right? So you gradually refine your answer. You give them a solution and debug it, make sure it do the basic stuff and check for corner cases um, and gradually um, put all this if statement here to cover all cases. So the, the difficulty in coding is not, you know, the syntax, but how you come up with um, a mindset to gradually check all the, all the cases. All right. Okay, so that's so much for review of the homework. By the way, you should finish your homework on time so that you can follow our uh, lecture and, and stuff, okay? Um, and also today's lecture will be two hours. Um, so um, if this teams, we'll see. Um, 
you know, happens to stop in one hour. I don't think so, because that, that's why I, I use the Teams. Then you just reconnect, right? So no big deal. Um, let's go back to the lectures. I think uh, I'll give some lectures now. All right, here. So because we have some time today, uh, by the way, if you want to refer to some books, this is a good book uh, for. Yeah, no, no class next week, I guess, uh, because uh, our Lego team is going to ASU for a kickoff meeting. And uh, so all the members is encouraged. I know one of you have, are, are Lego team members. So yeah, we're going to go to ASU for uh, for some fun stuff, all right? Um, so the the topics for for this class, I you know I want to just mention is about um, how to think, uh, you know, in in terms of uh, computation, right? So what computer science basically is how to solve a problem using a computer. Okay, so why use a, uh, what's the advantage of using a computer rather than by hand? Anybody want to give a comment? Right, what does a computer do? It's really accurate. It's very, yeah, it's accurate to some extent, but the, the good thing is that they can calculate faster than, than probably most of you guys, right? With some exceptions, right? If, unless you are a true genius that you train yourself to doing multiple digit uh, you know, calculation. But computer can do billions calculation per second, right? Um, and two operation at the same time, light travels with only one foot because light is very fast, right? And it can remember lots of results. It has tons of storage, tons of uh, hundreds of gigabytes or terabytes these days, right? Or petabytes. Um, and it's about 1.5 million bucks of standard size of uh, 100 gig storage. It can, can store entire uh, library of Congress into one hard drive. Um, so as a programmer, you, you, your job is to learn the language that you can talk to computers so that they can perform these uh, operations for you, right? For example, searching the web, go to Google. Nowadays, you know, we just do, did a search just now to get some Python syntax, right? Um, it can, for 45 billion pages, a thousand words per page, um, and it, suppose the computer can do 10 operations per word. It need five to point two days to find something using simple operations, right? It's basically even for fast computer, if you just doing brutal force searching linear search. So although computers are very fast, but if you do this linear search, you still take days to find some simple uh, result. So how can Google get you result in seconds, right? That's the power of algorithms. If with a good data structure and algorithms, you can actually search a page uh, in a um, in a faster way. Okay, we'll talk about, for example, binary search, where uh, it's like a telephone book, right? All the names are alphabetically what sorted, right? So if it's alphabetically sorted, if you want to find a person, for example, Alan, um, you probably want to just go to a section and ignore the rest of the alphabet right so that helps you and then you go to the next letters and just uh, uh, do this sorting again so by only a couple of uh, you know operations you will be able to find ellen in the in the phone book so this is called binary search and it's very powerful it reduced the search uh, complexity uh, this is a technical jargon uh, complexity from linear okay, to logarithm right Log is basically the op uh, the operate opposite operator of uh, exponential two to the power of x. Um, if you play chess, you know chess has a almost infinite number of uh, moves, and every second every move is about one point eight billion boards at uh, different configurations, right? So for a pretty fast computer, it still takes thirty minutes to decide each move if you want to exhaust. Every single move, every possibilities, um, 
so there's algorithms to minimax, uh, you know, the opponent, and it actually can, for chess, actually, it can exhaust, uh, I guess, almost. Um, but definitely some limited game like tic-tac-toe, uh, we can see uh, later, that will help you to uh, figure out the next best move from a computer point of view. So nowadays, no human being can play uh, to win computer more uh, anymore because computer now can just just brutal or uh, not brutal force, but can check every single possibilities of the next move and directly calculate the best move according to that. Right? No human can even the masters of chess cannot exhaust the search one in, in his head. So good object design also need to compute. So to need to compute tasking a reasonable amount of time. Okay, and Basically, the, the thing is algorithm is important because um, you can never get enough st storage, right? Um, so in the chess example, there's 10 to the power of one, two, three different possible games. How many atoms in the universe? 10 to the power of 80. So there's uh, more <laughs> games than the number of atoms in the universe that are known to humans. Uh, so there is a limit on what computer can do. So uh, some problems, because like I said, programming is basically solving problems using computers, right? Computer has its hardware limitations, also has software limitations. Um, you know, some problems are naturally very complex, like how to predict the weather. And if you live in Arizona, you're probably uh, good at predicting weather because every day is almost sunny. So if you say today's a sunny day, you have pretty, much accurate prediction already, right? But you know, apart from that, it's uh, not very, uh, you know, still computationally expensive to predict weather in a local, even in a local scale, right? And then also, you care about encryptions. Um, so basically, um, you have like strong password to protect your assets, um, and these passwords are encrypted, okay? Um, so that the brutal, uh, the hackers won't be able to uh, decrypt your message or um, a bank account in a reasonable amount of time with their average computer nowadays, okay? Cracking encrypted schemes. That's why this uh, uh, hashing uh, is need very long uh, keys to, to encrypt your message. However, you heard about this quantum computing where you know computer can do multiple things like a parallel universe in the same time. It will greatly, uh, it poses a great threat to today's popular encryption screens. So uh, with quantum computing getting, uh, you know, more and more uh, in reality, uh, mathematicians and computer scientists need to figure out a better encryption scheme to protect your assets. So this is a constant battle, right? So, um, and there's also some fundamentally impossible uh, problem that, you know, theoretically, there's no way to, can, can, to solve the problem. Okay like the holding problem, right? How can you predict whether a piece of software that you wrote will halt or stop, or, you know, with an answer for any input? So that's why, uh, you, you know, it's very rare that the you know, software is like totally bug free because you cannot exhaust, especially when the software has a unlimited amount of input possible, right? So you cannot test all the input. Or you can just predict uh, uh, what's the possibility that my my software will uh, will have bugs or stop working, right? So this halting problem is fundamentally mathematically impossible uh, to predict. It's called the it's you know NP hard problem. Okay, so when we talk about computer knowledge, there's two type of knowledge. Um, one is called the decorative knowledge, which is a statement of fact. Um, for example, I will tell you there's a candy taped to the one of the underside of the chair in the classroom. Uh, okay. And then, then there's another thing called imperative knowledge, which is basically a recipe or how to uh, knowledge, right? How to cook a breakfast, how to make a uh, jelly peanut butter sandwich. Okay. These are the recipes. Like, for example, uh, not only I want to tell you there's a candy tape to the underside of the chair in the classroom, I also want to tell you how to get that candy. 
that's the imperative knowledge, our recipe, right? So for example, these are recipe like face student from the room, count up three rows, start from middle section and count to write one chair, reach under and find it. This is a step-by-step -step instruction on how to get to the end result. And this is very similar to programming. In programming, as far as the things that we, we learned so far, it's basically sequential, right? You tell the program to do certain steps and to achieve a, a result, and that steps we sometimes call the recipe or algorithms. Okay, algorithm is set of instructions to accomplish a thing. So data structure and algorithm is a key concept in computer science, and we're gonna, you know, talk about this throughout this course. Even though it's an introductory programming course, but I want you to get that uh, concept from the get-go. Okay. Um, another numerical example to uh, for algorithms um, is um, okay. Typically, at this point, I'm gonna give you a demo, but I don't have. Uh, <laughs> the bread and butter to, uh, peanut butter today. Basically, I will be the robot and you program me to make a, a peanut butter sandwich, okay? Um, so how are you gonna instruct? So maybe let's let's do some virtual exercise. So Alan, pretend that I have a knife and I have a, a uh, let's see, sorry. I need to open my camera so that you can see me, right? I have a knife and I have a jar of peanut butter um, and I have a bread. Can you program me to make a peanut butter sandwich? What do you do? What's your instruction looks like? Uh, open the jar by turning it clockwise and then like, and then Very stick good. the knife in the jar. You even tell me how to open the jar. Okay, cool. And I get the lid. Take the knife out, spread it on the bread. Wait, 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 before I do that, I need to, I, I, I open that by turning it under uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, but then you didn't tell me to lift my arm and put the, put the lid on top of the desk, put the right? Lid, put the lid on the table and then use the yeah. knife to pick out the peanut butter and spread it on the bread. And then place- uh, uh, Okay. And I spread it on bread. And then place I the repeat. knife Another and you said repeat, right? Time. Repeat how many times? Four times. And then, yeah. So in that instruction, you can see there are some sequential um, instructions, and there are some some loops, right? So you repeat this option several times until some conditions met, and then that. Can you think about a Conditional instruction in that in that uh, scenario. Can you give me a a uh, put a knife in the jelly? Yeah, but these are sequential, right? How about branching? We learned about the if statement, right? What kind of uh, things you can encounter when make peanut butter sandwich? Clean the knife. <laughs> yeah, very good. After that, clean up is very important, right? For example, oh, this jar is too. Uh, you know, uh, too tight, I cannot open it. So if the, the lid is too tight, then you can you can go to Africa. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea. So in the simple instruction like that, um, that's how you're gonna program it. And uh, by the way, these are called a pseudo code. Pseudo code is, is not an actual code, okay, per se, but it's, uh, um, but it's, um, it's actually, um, you know, um, in English instructions to, to tell you what to do, right? It does not need uh, any uh, particular languages. So, okay, another example here, it is more mathematical. So how to compute the square root of a number? Like computer do it, right? Um, so, you know, computer a power or, you know, you multiply two things together is easy. To square root is not that easy, all right? But to computer a number, uh, a square root of the number, what you can do is something called a guess and a check. 
So what it does mean is that you can guess a number. That's the square root of y times y, right? If the guess number multiplied together is close enough to x, okay? Now you have to define how close enough it is. Stop and say g is the answer, all right? If not, then you have to guess a new number. So now it's not just random guess, you have to follow some rules, right? If you average the, the guess number and using x to divide by g, then you get a new guess that's closer to the real answer. And using the new guess, repeat until you find the close enough. So the close enough means the difference between the guessed answer um, square and the, the actual number, which is the x square, right? Um, is is really small, like you know, um, here I have a g is three, three times three is nine. X divided by g is uh, five times three, three, three. X is what? X is um, thirty. What is x? <sighs> Square root of um. Okay. So G is four, 16. So yeah, yeah. if X is 17. Something like between 17. So if X is 16, right? X is 16, 16 divided by three, is five dollars three three three, and you take the average of that with the guess number, you get four dollars one six six seven, and use that number, you just uh, repeat again, you get this number, and uh, um, you divide x by this number is three. Right? So until you get close to sixteen, and you can stop. So your answer is pretty close to the actual answer four. So this is another way to solve the problem, guess and check. Right? Um, so again, we talk about what recipe is. We uh, simulated by a, a peanut butter sandwich. Okay, so computers are evolving also very quickly in the last decades, right? Um, the original computer is all made of vacuum tubes. You can see it's very huge. So oftentimes occupy the entire building. And but the limit, the computational power is very limited. OK, very limited. So there's two types of computers. One's called the fixed program, which means the computer is doing do one thing pre-programmed and one thing only. For example, your calculator is a called a fixed program uh, computer because it can only do calculations. And this Alan Turing's Bombay is basically in World War II to basically decrypt the uh, Germans uh, encrypt, encryption message, right? That's one thing only. And then the stored program computer is a general purpose computer, which you can store, execute instructions. So that's like your laptop, your, your PC, that's general purpose. And this is a diagram for what a computer is, right? Really, it's basically a central program unit called CPU, which is in turn can be decomposed into two units, which is control unit, which has program counter and the arithmetic logic unit, L, uh, ALU, basically doing some primitive operation like add, multiplication, division, and stuff. But this control unit takes the instruction from the memory and feed it to this ALU to do some calculation, get the result back, Put, save this to the memory. And also it can take a program from the input and uh, generate the result and print it on the screen, which is output or on the printer. So a computer basically has this um, five unit, right? Memory or disk space, input, output, and some central control unit. All right, we can skip this. So programming really, you're creating recipes. 
but in a different syntax that computer will understand. All right. For the computer language itself, why is it different than the human languages? Okay, this is a map map of the human language. What's the the biggest thing is that the more frequently this word is used in English language. So the to and that was of is a really frequently used right languages. Um, but in programming languages, you are dealing with numbers, strings, simple operations, and uh, those Boolean uh, integer type. Okay, so these are different uh, syntax vocabulary uh, in programming language versus human languages. So in in programming language, you really only have a limited number of uh, keywords. Okay, so in that way, it's good. But but on the other hand, if you have a typo, you will get a lot of uh, errors because computer don't understand the thing if you just mistyped. So it's a lot of frustrations. And then there is also the language aspect of syntax, right? So syntactically valid sentence may not be. Uh, OK, so syntax is, is gra grammar, right? In language, right? English cat dog boy. These are three nouns together. It's not. A, identify a basic element of a sentence. But if you want to have a verb here, a like cat hugs boy, that is a valid sentence. So that's some rules. Computer language is same, right? High five is not syntactically valid. What does high five mean right, in Python? Nothing. If you type high five in the console, it will give you error. However, high times five has a meaning, which is Luis Pro, high times five, what's the meaning of high times five in Python? What does it do? You know? How about Lucas? Gavin. Anyone? You already forgot? Anyway, you can find out uh, by searching uh, Kaisan document. And 3.2 times 5, of course, is syntactically valid. 3 plus high is there's an error for that because uh, you cannot add different. Uh, type of variable together, all right? So what is semantic? Semantic is a meaning associated with a uh, uh, string of symbols with no static semantic errors. For example, English, um, in English it says can, we, uh, can have many meanings in one sentence. For example, flying planes can be dangerous. Right, so that sentence has two meanings. Flying is a verb. Uh, the action of flying the plane is dangerous. Or the plane itself can be dangerous. Right. These two meanings. This reading lamp hasn't uttered the word since I bought it. All right, he's basically confused the reading lamp in, uh, to a lamp that can read. The reading lamp is for your reading, but not read for you. OK, so that's some semantic uh, misconception in English. And it's ambiguous, right? That's the type of language. But in computer programming language, you cannot have ambiguity. You, have, you can only have one meaning. Sometimes it may not be the one you intended, but there's only one meaning. OK. So in programming, you will encounter a lot of errors in the beginning because you're not familiar with syntax, right? For example, three times high. Sorry, three plus high. OK. It's very common, and when you get more exercise, you will easily identify those. Um, and all for those uh, static semantic errors, there is some IDE to check for that, or compilers, if it's compiler languages. Now, the most difficult part is, is syntactic correct, but semantically, it has different meaning than what you intended. That's one is very difficult to spot, right? It will output some values that may not be the one you thought, right? 
it's either will cause program crashes stop running or it will run forever never stop these two are both problems and as the third one is more difficult it gives you answer but it may not be the one you intended expected our goal for this course is to learn syntax and semantics of program language aka python um, and you want to practice how to first give a recipe like what you program me using uh, the verbal instructions and then translate that recipe or pseudocode um, that form a language that computer can understand, which is Python. And then of course, we'll learn some uh, computational thinking and algorithms by, along the way. All right, so. So we already talked about simple um, data point for, for Python. Integer, like 42, float, like 3.14 is pi. Boolean, what is Boolean variable? Alan, what does Boolean variable mean? It's like a tr true or false variable. Like yeah, you there's only it. two values, yes. And remember in Python, these are capitalized true and false, okay? Be careful about that. And there's certs, a fourth one is called non-type. So I can, you can see a lot of uh, code I wrote, there is like, if there's some errors, I will turn non. Non is basically say it's not a number. It's a special value type, right? And you can treat them differently. That's why non is a type. You have to check for it. And all in all, because Python don't enforce you to declare type when you uh, when you declare a variable, you can use this type function, type and something to tell what the type is. Like type of five is a literal of of uh, integer. Give you int type three dot o is the float. So use that uh, to check for the values, uh, type of values. You can also convert one type to another. Yeah, we learned the int function. It will convert any uh, type to integer, like int 3.9 will be truncated to three. So this is a different. It's not um, round up, right? All around there. It's basically truncated. So any decimal point will be discarded. Now you may ask, what's, what's about the negative number? How about int minus 3.9? What will that be? Well, let's find out. int minus 3.9 is minus 3. Is that what you expected? Basically, it will just simply discard the decimal point, all right? And you can use print to print the things in the console. We already know that. Uh, you can now combine them together. This is the math operators. You already know it. Now, what this difference between I for two forward slash with one forward slash. Anyone? This is a review, okay? So what what's the difference between uh, 100 divided by three, which is that, and 100 two forward slash three? Yes, Alan. Is the two slashes mod? No, two slashes is not mod. Don't be confused. This is integer division, which basically just discard the decimal point, right? Uh, uh, one, 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 divided by three. One, 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 divided by three. Uh, actually, uh, one, one, two, well, 109 divided by three. Okay, uh, 109 divided by 2, right? 109 divided by 2. So it will not run up, it just uh, discards again. It's an integer. So basically, double slash is called integer division. It will just do a division and do it uh, convert it to a uh, integer. Okay, it will discard the uh, decimal point. So in other words, 109 divided by two is basically equivalent to one to int 
of 109 divided by 2. So it will save you some uh, typing, right? Instead of you calling a function and convert to an uh, integer, it will just uh, convert the integer directly. So that's called integer division. Okay, so now Alan mentioned the mod. What is mod? If you, if you just divide something like without using decimals and you have a remainder, it will just return the remainder. Yes, basically it's giving a remainder of a div division. If it's divisible, the remainder will be zero, right? It also can be used to test if an integer is divisible by another integer, okay? So it's often used to like tell a number is even or odd, right? If you mod two and it get a zero, that's even. If you get one, that's odd. There's only two possibilities, right? Like a zero mod two would be zero. So zero is an even number. One mod two is a one and one is an odd number. 13 mod two is also one, right? You also discover that if you mod two, there's only two different possibilities, right? But if you mod three, like 13 mod three, how many possibility can have? You can have one and 14 mod three, you can have two and it's 15 mod three, you can have zero. So zero, one, two, three different possibilities, right? If you mod three, you can get three. What about mod four? Three, zero, one, uh, 18 mod four, two. So zero, one, two, three. Now it repeats after that. So you can see if you mod four, it gives you four different uh, possibilities. In other words, if you mod n, it will give you n from zero to n minus one different possibilities. So mod is often used to limit the number of um, output to the known uh, value. It's very uh, useful operators in many uh, applications such as the hash table, where you know a, a uh, fixed number of of uh, boxes that you can put a number in and the number odd number the number of boxes so <clears throat> so you can have multiple numbers in one of the box in that uh, limited length so you can use this mod function to compute uh, to use it as a hash function and something like that okay so that's mod very very helpful uh, important information and then this is power times time means i to the power of j all right, <clears throat> and of course there is a comparison operators. You have greater than, less than, greater equal, less equal, equal equal, and not equal. All right, so that's a review. Okay, and for the logic operator, not a. So if a and b are booleans, so not a is not. So if a is true, not a is false, and vice versa. So and like I said, if two logic operations, you can use and together, right? A and B means A and B both have to be true to be true. If one of them are false, true and false would be false or true. If it's false and false, of course it's false, right? But or is the opposite. A or B, any of them true, the whole thing is true. If it is false only when there's both false. And and means any of them are false, they are false. It's only true when A and B both are true. Is that clear? So that's a very important uh, operator for, for logic operator for Williams. This is often combined with the if statement to do uh, a lot of uh, branchings, right? So, of course, this is another maze problem where how you find a food, food court by a map and you want to program the, your, your robot or your partner to get there. You give them instructions and that's what you are programming um, a robot. Okay, we talked about branching last time and this is called a flowchart. 
a flowchart is basically a box of with arrows and, and other symbols to indicate the program flow. That's why it's called flowchart. Okay. Very useful to communicate to your other partners about the idea of your program. Okay. This is an example, even or odd, right? So you get an input a number, which is integer, converted int, and you mod uh, mod two to get uh, a number. If it's zero, it means even. If it's not zero, which is one, it will mean it's an odd number. Okay. And remember, equal equal is used for comparison, not a single equal, because Single equal is reserved for assignment, right? These are two different, totally different operators. But newbies often, uh, you know, mistakenly using one for another. That's a common mistake, all right? Because assignment is very often used in programming, and uh, sometimes we will have, uh, you know, confused about that. Especially when you mathematically say if a equal to b. And you just given one equal sign. That turns that comparison into assignment. Okay. And also indentation is important. Indentation is, is shown in multiple places in Python. For example, here. You can now for each if statement, you want to indent some level so that this block of code belongs to <coughs> This branch. And the next branch is here. So it's very clear which code belongs to which statement. If you nested this condition, so for example, here, this statement belongs to that sub branch. And also, this is belong to the upper branch, right? So this is a two level nested down. And you need another indentation here. So like one indentation is about four spaces or two if you want to make it this, you know more compact, but you have to be consistent, right? If you pick two, you can stick with two. Don't use tab using four spaces. Tab and four spaces are different. And oftentimes the mistake is you mis uh, mixture the tab and spaces together. That's a no-no. Oftentimes, you cannot see the spaces or tabs. It's all empty to your eye, but in computer, they are different. There's a special tool you can use to turn on these uh, types. So space and tab are different, okay? But IDE will take over that for you, hopefully. And finally, the compound blends. You can use and, or, or not to combine these together. For example, a simple comparison, which one is the, the minimum number between X, Y, and Z? You can use this six, right? If X less than both Y and Z, X is the least number. Otherwise, X is not least than between Y and Z, one of them are least. If Y is less than Z, then Y is least. Otherwise, Z is least, least right? These are following logical expressions. Okay. So again, this is the syntax for the for the branching. <clears throat> um, assignment is basically binding a value to a uh, variable, and this value is stored in computer memory. Right. This name is merely this uh, address. So it's like it's. <clears throat> Um, you know, when you assign this 22 divided by 7 to a pi approximate variable, next time you want to refer to that, you can just call that name. Right? Like you do go to hotel, you book a room 203, and then for the entire trip, the room 203 represents your room. So that's a variable. And programming is different in the mass. Something, especially the assignment variable, right? Um, uh, you'll be often confused about this uh, this statement. What does the radius equal to radius plus one? 
right? Anyone? Gavin? <clears throat> can you explain this statement? Mathematically, it's wrong. How can radius equal to radius plus one? These radius are different. Why are they different? In what aspect they are different? Um, radius, radius plus one is different because radius plus one is adding one to radius. Mm -hmm. And? Yeah, on the right hand side is adding one to the old radius, right? And what, as soon as this is evaluated, this radius is getting new value, which is based on pre previous value plus one. So you can see this is just like, it's like a you, like Alan in different time. So you are not you a minute ago or a second ago, right? So you can say, I'm currently, I am Alan <clears throat> or Lucas or Gavin, but a minute later, I'm a new Gavin. You know what I mean? Because you also grow up a little bit, right? A minute, you're old, a minute older now. So these are different. So you're constantly updating this variable with a new number. So basically you, you get the, whatever value is in previous radius. The, okay, the, the room number is the same. It's all called radius. But the content inside the radius can be changed. That's what we call the mutable, right? You can do uh, these things like that. And you, you, up, you just increase by one and adding it back to radius. So at the end of this statement, the radius will be updated to a new value, which is whatever the value uh, by one. If it's 100 before, it's 101. If it's one, it's two, right? So it depends on the previous value. You can also shorthand this by this plus equal to one. That's the same thing as equal to this plus one. It's just a synthetic sugar to reduce number of typings. And it's, it's more favored in this way. This is called a binding finding the value to a variable. Yeah. So all in all, the highlight part, you should understand belong to different part of the program flow. So oftentimes, you, if you forget the indentation, it's an error, okay? If you do this, it's an error. You have to, yeah, you have to use a tab key to make sure you have indentation whenever you have a new block. All right, I all I speak enough about this uh, eco eco versus eco, right? So you should be warned. Next time, if you made the same mistake, uh, punish yourself by writing this hundred times. All right. There's a question here, how to swap value? So if I have an X and Y, how to swap value in X and Y? What do I mean by that is, <coughs> okay, let's get some exercise. Um, I'm give, I'm gonna give you the uh, invite. in the chat window. So you can all see this, but don't do anything yet, right, for this. What I'm gonna do is define a new function <clears throat> called swap and take two numbers. A is integer, B is also integer. I'm gonna uh, return, no, not return anything. Just want to swap A and B. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna return a tuple.
Any ideas? How do we swap two numbers? <laughs> First of all, what do I mean by swap? Say AB is equal to like five and seven, comma seven. I want to return seven and five, right? So A is five, B is seven. Now A is seven, B is five. How are we gonna do that? Anyone volunteer? You can type now, right? If you join this, you can type it directly. Let me see how you implement this. Hey, don't run it. You, you want to implement this in the function first, okay? Yes, good. A, B is an integer. You want to swap the content. Say A has five, B has seven. You want to return, uh, make B equal to seven and A equal to five. All right, so you, you're trying to use some temporary variable, right? Another variable to, to store some values. Oh, you guys are fighting. You have to implement the function first if we can call that function. Oh, you don't need to define it again. I already give you the function definition. You just need to continue to implement this. Before you try to implement this, can you verbally tell me what you're gonna do to swap two variables? Anyone want to elaborate on that? Yeah, Alan. Create like two more variables. Two more variables, okay. Why you need two more? Cause, Cause then you place A in one variable and B in that variable, and then you place B back in that in the variables, the two variables, the original two variables. So you have A, B, C, D, right? A and B are original variables, and C equal to A, D equal to B. Yeah. And then you assign A equal to the other D, and B equal to C, is that what you want? Yeah. Okay, that's a good sort. Can you reduce the number of variables to three, not four? Yes, but you can make like a list. Mm. And then yes. you, can, mm. you can use um, variable one, variable two, and list three. Well, I mean, you only need the three variables to swap two values. Right? Yeah. How are you going to implement that? You describe the four variables. See, you already give inconsistent tabs and space. So some of you use a tab, some of you use space. That's not good. You have to be consistent. Either use space, four spaces, or just tab. You don't need to, to do any data structure yet. You don't need to use the list or dictionary or sets for now, okay. right? You can just use variables. A and B are variables given to you. You can just add the C, so C equal to, so basically assign the value A or B. Ah, uh, what is that? It's a string. Be careful. A and B are variables, not strings. This does not mean anything. You don't need a parenthesis for A. It's just a single value. 
the variable. Let's see what's what what are you doing here? Okay, so yeah, c equal to a, a <clears throat> equal to b. You don't need the parentheses. That's all you need. You don't need parentheses. Yeah. And c equal to b l. B equal to c, right? The C stores original A and A is updated by B. Then C, uh, B, now new B is this. Also. Okay, cool. Okay, everybody stop typing for now. Otherwise I will not give you the access, right? <clears throat> so Alan just implemented, not Alan. Who, who implemented this? So he used a different variable C, a temporal variable where you store the old A, right? The one in the right-hand side is the old data. Now the new data on the left-hand side is updated by B. So A has the content of B now, so it's swapped. And then B can be assigned to the C, which is original A, because you need a variable C to store the data, okay? So here is my analogy. You have three containers. You want to swap these two. The you want to swap the content in this cup to this in this cup. You cannot do this, right? You are mixture them too. So what you do is the, you assign a value to this temporary value. You put it here. You put the content here. That's your C. Now this one is empty. So I can pull this die into that. This one will have the new value. Now this guy is empty. So I can pull the original data back to here. Now, effectively, these two are swapped. Ta-da, right? Conceptually simple. Now, of course, in Python, you can, you can do a much simpler way. You can do this. A and B are tuples. You can say A, B equal to B, A. So simple things like that will swap A, B already. This is another way. I think none of other program language has this ability, but in Python, you can do this. So basically, it will assign old B to A, but we'll have to keep the uh, old B around. So B, uh, so old A around, so B can be assigned to A. Okay. All right, let's go back to. Um, So we talk about the strings and stuff. Let's see. Um, So we talk about this branching stuff. Um, and let's talk about loop. All right. All right. Um, let's talk about loops. Um, I get two.
So strings, branching, and iterations. Um, we talk about the strings uh, in the last lecture, and uh, you can actually concatenate the string using plus, right? And you can also use the index to, ref uh, to access the particular part in the string. Slicing is an important concept. Remember, this first index is included. The second index is not included, OK? And then we talk about branching. Um, now let's talk about iterations. So suppose you have a computer game. You are in the lost forest, and this character is moving along. And so basically, the strategy he does is keep this doing forever. If um, it won't go to the left, sorry, if it go to right, um, it will set background to wood background and if, and keep searching if it's going to right. So if you if you're going to the right, it will just continue with this background. Otherwise, if you go to left, um, it will exit the game and so anytime you get this nested loop, it will just keep searching. Oh, are you going to left or right? Left or right, and and such. But that's tedious because you don't know how many steps this game will last. It will last forever. You can't just write this if block forever, right? So what do you do? Well, there is a loop to come to rescue. So basically, the while loop is basically keep checking the condition again and again in a loop until some some uh, expression um, give you the uh, false value. So basically, if this expression is true, then we'll keep doing this in that block. Otherwise, it will exit the game. So this is a, a while loop, like the game loop. So you, oftentimes you will see while loop in the game because uh, say if you didn't kill the boss, uh, your health level is still above some threshold, you can keep playing the game. If you uh, lost the battle, it will exit the game. Or you win the battle, it will exit the game. So these exit conditions will be some uh, complex logic to tell if you are still in the game <clears throat> or not. So that's iterations. Um, it will prevent you from writing infinite nested loops. So here is a syntax for the, for the loop while condition, colon, this is important and space right after that. So it's very similar to if statement. This is a block to execute while in this loop. Is that is that uh, clear? It will repeat until what? Until this condition is false. While condition is true, it will keep executing. So you may see uh, this statement. Uh, while true okay and then do something so it will keep doing something forever this is called what infinite loop right it will just do it infinitely who wrote this <laughs> uh, so let's just clear up this one And I have to use a quotation mark, of course. Otherwise, it will be errors. OK. Wait, why it's, uh... oh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's pull up and for a string and int. What did I say? Anyway, let's let's comment on this because we are gonna do this, right? We just need to do print something. Ah, why it's still giving that? I already commented out everything. Yeah. Okay. Finally, it's doing something infinitely. Okay. So to prevent that from that, oftentimes I'll have a something in the while loop 
to break out of the loop. And that syntax is break, okay? So if I do break, it will only do once. Ah, what's going on here? Hey, I'm gonna clean this up. Ah, somebody do the man here. No, don't do that. Okay, see, it only does this once, okay? Because I break it out of the loop, right? You can also have some other conditions here, like uh, don't do that infinite loop, all right? So um, let's, let's say if you have a variable, right? Let's count, count, go to zero, right? Count down, let's do count down. Count of 10, while count, is greater than zero, but print uh, count. Okay, so, um, and then don't forget, I'm gonna count minus equal to one. So I'm gonna subtract count one by one, right? And then I'm gonna run it. You can see, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7 until one and then maybe after the loop okay, you can say happy happy new year so that's a typical countdown scenario right you count uh, 10 9 all the way to zero uh, and happy new year now notice that it didn't count zero because it's greater than so what try change this condition to make it also print zero anyone Can you change one line of code to make it also print a zero? Greater than negative one. Or you can, yeah, that's correct. Or greater equal to one. Oh, sorry, greater equal to zero. Right? So if greater equal to zero, it will, yeah, if somebody put a break here, it will only print one thing and break. But you have to be consistent. You have to, uh, the tab has to be flush, right? All right, so stop, stop uh, doing that. Hi, right, this is a while loop. There's also another good loop called for loop. Okay, I, I'm, are you, do you understand the while loop now? Let's go back to the slides. So, there's also a for loop. For loop is a syntax like this. Uh, you have a variable. It's like a counter in a for loop. And this counter will keep changing. Uh, give them the range, for example. It's often used with the range function. The range function gives you a, a um, list of numbers. So, uh, and it will iterate through this list and print out. So, for example, here, um, what does that range function mean? Okay, stop doing nonsense thing, all right? Otherwise, um, you will not be able to <coughs> edit this. Let me. Can you, can you stop? Because otherwise, it, you know, I cannot uh, give you a demo. All right. So if I give you a for loop, I stop typing, please. <laughs> Have a lot. Lot of trouble. All right. All right. So for I in range of a hundred, this is typically used print I. It will print one um, zero to ninety nine. All right, zero times nine, not hundred. So this hundred is not included. It start from zero. If you want to start from one, what do you do? All right, I would ask you stop typing. All right, you can do whatever you want. If I finish this, but if you do this, we cannot continue with the class. All right. So whoever is doing this, stop right now. OK, 
can you stop? All right, so if it's one comma 101, so why 101? Because this number is not included. So it will give you one to 100. All right, so let's run again. You'll see it goes to 199.98 all the way from one, okay? So this is how the range function works. Start, stop. Again, start is included, the stop is not. Now, you can also have a third parameter in the range, which is the step. So if you want to print even uh, odd numbers, you can have a step of two. So what does that do? That will give you, hey, 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 stop typing. Done. Can you stop typing? I will let you play with it when it's your time, okay? If I don't ask you to type, please don't. Otherwise, we'll never, we'll never finish, finish the class. We only have 20 minutes left and you still have homework to do. I can stop anytime and you're gonna have to figure out yourself, right? Do you want to do that? You want to just play? Whoever can tell me what this code does? What does this print? Did I say stop typing? Can you just speak up what this code does instead of typing? I mean, what um, do you? Uh, yeah. Doesn't it like print between uh, one and one hundred? Oh, no. no. Uh, for I in range. All right. Whoever is this? Oh yeah. Uh, whenever it's in the but in uh, one of those numbers, and whenever it's in the range of one to one hundred one, it will print itself, right? No. Um, There's like a it's... two. What does this two mean? And. For what is worse, can you stop typing so people can see what's on that screen? This is making it very, very difficult to see. Yes, Luis, you have a question? Okay, now you can see it. What does this two mean? I just told you so, and you're not paying attention and you keep playing with this. That's why you didn't learn anything, right? Pay attention to the to the teacher when they tell you something so that you can do it correctly next time when it's your turn, all right? You should know the classroom protocols and respect other students. If you are doing this um, on your own, Bless you. Then, then you're not welcome next time because you know you actually murdered other students' opportunity to learn. Right? You are stealing. You are the thief to steal other people's time because all the time we wasted to watch you typing nonsense in into the into the program, and none of us can learn. See, you cannot even tell what this two mean. I just told you so, like a minute ago. Anybody knows? I mean, if you really want to learn, answer my question. That's the best way to understand something. Don't be shy, and at the same time, don't just do some annoying things on the background, right? And whoever did this, please admit that you did it, right? Be, a, be brave. If you do it, you should uh, take responsibility for that, isn't it? <clears throat> so who can answer my question? What will this print on the screen? Exactly. Alan? <clears throat> can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Lucas, so can you answer the question? What will that um, print? 
I think it's, I think it will print like, um, Just tell me your intuition. Okay, I, I think it prints 101, just that. Just 101, that's right. Well. This one is not working correctly. Why it's only print one? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. It will only print one because it has this range. Start, stop, and step. So the third one, if I do this, if I do this, this step is the third parameter, okay? So now, what will print? Yeah. Now I change this range. Um, I think it will print like um numbers one to one hundred and one with like which each of them like being like two more than last one. So it will print one to one hundred one, but. Well, skip one, right? Yeah. So it will put all the even number, odd numbers. It will print all the <coughs> odd numbers. One, three, five, seven, nine. Is that what you expected? Yes. Does anybody have any questions on that? Do you do you fully understand this now? Ellen, can you mute yourself? All right. What if I put five here? It will skip five, right? Every time you count less numbers. So this uh, number is a step. And the 101 is not included. Just, just, just so you know, okay? There's no, this is illegal. You cannot do, there's only three different uh, uh, different parameters. The start, the stop, and the step. Okay, it's the start, stop, and step. Uh, these three parameters. So that's the range function. And then there is also, uh, for loops to loop through some variables. So strings can also be looped because string is a sequence of data, right? So to see like that, for character in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay, print car. So what it this does is it will print A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one by one from that string. So basically it treats string as a collection of characters, right? Now you can do this variable things because if you do, uh, you know, remember the step function, is that a variable, which one? Yeah, character is a variable. So character, you can use anything like ch, right? Short for character. And then you can also, uh, print uh, uh, and equal to comma. So and means it will uh, use this to, as a delimiter. So now you can have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right, with a comma. All right, um, now you can do multiple things, right? Let's look at uh, one of the uh, homeworks um, today. Um, Homeworks. PS. Uh, 
and say PS20. So this homework says, um, camel casing, so you can use this syntax, right? So given a string, uh, convert it to camel casing. What camel casing mean? Um, it's like uh, like every new word would have like a capital letter. Yes, a uh, capital letter. All right. So, so here we can we can do the example like enter a string camel case and print a correspond. Oh, and then also Python use snake case. Snake case means all lowercase with uh, underscore in between those. So, for example, if we I do camel case. And a convert to snake case will be camel underscore case. Okay, so that's that's one example. So to to do that function, all you need is a for loop, right? For character in CC, right? Let's first up. Um, so so what do we do? Um, we do a camel casing, right? Um, you can do multiple things like answer equal to an empty string, right? And answer plus equal to character and return answer. So we're not changing them, right? Um, and I'm just going to run this. Let's see what I'm, now help one, two, three. And it will is what so basically you whatever you print it will it will get back to you. But now I'm not doing this. And uh, let's say if right if character is up um is upper is upper means if the character is uppercase then then what ch plus co to uh, not CH plus, actually answer plus. Answer is your final. So answer will be appended with what? With uh, CH dot lower. So we'll convert that to lowercase, right? Um, and wait, not only that, I want to also add a underscore, right? So now I'm gonna do answer plus and underscore. So I'm gonna add underscore and convert that first character to lower. Otherwise, I would just uh, else answer plus equal to character. So as is. So let's run this. Um, so camel case, and it will be converted to camel underscore case. This is called a snake case, and this is called a camel case. Understand? So basically, you when you inter encounter a capitalized um, or is uppercase, there is a function for that. Then you just uh, replace that with two characters. One is underscore, one is convert that character into a lower case and uh, keep adding it. This is a common technique to assemble a new um, new string. Okay. Of course, you can also convert that string because strings are immutable. You can also convert that string into a list and finally convert that list back to a string. So to do that, you can make it a list. Okay, we haven't talked about this yet, but we'll talk about now. And then, and you can use the same thing. Uh, you list has append, append function. You can append this to a list. Okay. Um, and you can have append here. Okay. And then append ch. So basically, it allows you to iterate through the whole string. Um, and append this. So now you return this function. You, it's a list. You want to convert a string. How to convert the list to string? Uh, you can do this. This dot. Um, um, join. You want to join everything from the list to a string. Right. This one will give you a string. With everything joined together. So let's run this uh, camel case, and you can see it will also give you that. 
So this one join a list, it will give you um, a stream back, right? Join means that you put everything in the list. Let me just print out this. You can print out the answer as a list and you can see what's going on. Camel case. And you can see this list has C-A-M-E-L underscore C-A-S-E in it. And when you join it, it join everything together into a string, okay? How to do the opposite? You split this into a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, um, uh, a list. So you can do string dot, but anybody remember? String dot split, right? I just told you split. Uh, wait, actually, <sighs> split. <laughs> You have to you have to give them a um, sorry. String one is camel camel space case. You have to have a delimiter, and then you can do string dot split, and it will give you. Um, wait, why this is. Oh, string does string one does split string one. Yes. Okay. So you can see you split into cam one case with this uh, delimiter in between. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So just these two are very useful. Uh, convert a string to a list using split, and then join the element of list together into a string using join function. Okay, you can also uh, join with some delimiter if I use this uh, underscore or maybe star to join, then it will have a star for every everything between. You can see it has C star, A star, M star, E star. So you are literally inserting a star inside, the, inside this list. So basically using this to join, right? And if you're using just empty space, not even empty space. So it's the difference between this and that, because this one will give you empty space. This one will not give you empty space, right? If you are doing this, you will see, um, in your case, you will have C-A-M-E-L with space in it. So this character is the join character of delimiter. And if you don't want any delimiter in between, you can just use the, single code code without anything in between, all right? So again, this is uh, join the string together and that is um, split into a string. All right, so this is homework one. So we talk while loop and for loops and this range and <coughs> start, stop and step, right? Uh, you have to pay a condition, and then there is a break statement, um, which will break the inner loop. If you have a two while loops, you can have that, right? A nested loop. You have while loop inside the while loop. If you have a break for the nested while loop, it only uh, break inside, and it will continue with outer loop. Okay. You can also have a break in in the for loop as well. So, can somebody tell me what happened? in this program. Um, so um, basically it, uh, mm. it's, um, gets all the number, the I's and all the numbers between uh, mm -hmm. five and eleven that um that to, to have a that skip two or whatever, and then um and then uh my sum uh, it's zero plus i, and if my sum is five and it uh breaks the thing with jig. Right. And so it also when, prints when, So it should print what, five. 
Right, exactly. So when the break statement hit, it satisfied this condition. So my sign is five, so it should be five. All right, so this is a summary of for loop and while loop. Okay, while loop is unbounded because you don't know how many iterations beforehand. It can be forever. Um, you can have early break. Um, but if you use a counter, initialize before the loop and increment it inside loop. So this initialize increment, I'll take care of by you. Because while loop only knows when it's end in the condition. It can run out automatically increase the counter for you. So a while loop is more universal. You can do anything. But the for loop is uh, more convenient because if you know how many number of iterations to, to do in beforehand, you use for loop, it can end early with a break, just like while loop. It has a counter and it will automatically increment. You can always rewrite a for loop using a while loop. Here is the flow diagram for a loop. So basically, you have a test, and if it's true, it keep looping until it's false. Then this is a while loop, right? Here's an example. How to square the value of x by add repeatedly. That's an interesting idea, right? Uh, you can actually do some higher order mathematics using a, a basic um, addition, which is computer doing, right? So for example, um, what this code do? X equals three, answer is zero. And initialize the iter left to X, so okay, while it left is not zero. So it basically add <clears throat> X to answer, and then the iteration left minus one. So basically if X is three, it will iterate three times, x of two, iterate two times. Okay, the number of iteration equal to the number of uh, the uh, x itself. And they want to add itself that number of times, that is basically three times three, or four times two, uh, four times four. Do you understand this code? Because, you know, three times three is basically Add three, three times, right? Understand? So x times x is basically add x x times. That's the definition definition of square of multi you know multiplied by some cells. Okay. So this is how you. Uh, you step into through the code. You start with X and the answer will keep going up. The iteration left going down. You add three, three times. So now, um, we will talk about, so now you learn the while loop. Okay. You can do a lot of things with combine the while loop and uh, um, the for loops. But we are already out of time. So I guess you can, we can stop it today and don't forget to do the homework. All right, do the homework. <coughs> Um, Any questions? No. Um, like I said uh, before, if you go, um, you can also iterate through the list right? quickly, like for item in a list of one, two, three. This is a list, and then you can do something print item. There's also a type called a dictionary, and we don't have time today. But dictionary is basically a key value pair. Like you have um, A is equal to one, B is equal to two. So whenever you get A, you say uh, dictionary A, that value is two. Oh, sorry, is one, right? 
and use this symbol. This is dictionary. And to iterate a dictionary, you can say for t in dip dot just dip, right? And print t. So you can print the key. If you want to print a value, you can say key value in dip dot items. And then it will give you the key item, a key value pair, key value pair. And if you run it, you can see A is one, B is two, C is three. So this is how you iterate a dictionary. And you probably need this for the homework. So that's why I mentioned here. Okay, so we'll talk about more about the uh, iterating through those data structures next class. All right, thank you. And uh, this video will be uploaded to the, to the classroom. Any questions? If not, then see you next time. Have a good long weekend. Bye. 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 Have a nice weekend. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.